Remember? St. Mary, rest her Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And let me thank my colleagues as well. Mr. Speaker, let me first of all thank all the members of staff of the parliament and yourself for the steadfast management of the house and the keen attention to detail. Permit me to thank my colleagues on both sides of the house for their advice and sharing of knowledge. I want to express my gratitude to my administrative and personal staff who have worked tirelessly at my side, including my security team led by Sergeant Cleve Malcolm, who is currently off on a promotional course, and I wish him all the very best. I must mention Mr. Ralston McKinley, a.k.a. Stouty, for his safe handling of a, the motor vehicle, and he has proven time and time again that he is the best driver in the world. <laughs> and permit me, Mr. Speaker, to say a special thank you to Ms. Leng, my longest serving assistant. And she has been with me since 2003, some 21 long years. And thank you, Ms. Leng, for your kindness, patience, and service. Mr. Speaker, permission to speak from a seat other than my own. <laughs> you, you may continue. Thank you, sir. Let me also acknowledge the students from the Taki High School, the Arokopesa High, as well as St. Mary High, the Goshen Primary School, who are all with me today. And I must also acknowledge the members of the Taki Foundation, including our visiting professor from Yale University. Mr. Speaker, the greatest set of workers anywhere are those from Western St. Mary. And also my management team, supervisors, I thank you. I give God thanks every day for blessing me with the privilege, Mr. Speaker, of serving the people and citizens of the best constituency in the world, Western St. Mary. Mr. Speaker, the state of Western St. Mary is good and will be better once the Greater Mason Hall Water Project is completed. This project was committed years ago but finally we see the work being done. Phase one is well on track, and the citizens of Mason Hall will see piped portable water for the first time in history. As a result, improved water supply will be felt in Canopan, Days Mountain, and Barriff Hall. In phase two, which, which has started, there will be upgrades to the water treatment plants in Pottinger Spring, White River, and both. Therefore, improved water flows will be felt in Tower Isle, Rio Nuevo, Bosco Bell, Stewart Town, Othersfield, Mango Valley, Arocobesa, Wentworth, Villa Road, Galena, and all communities leading off the North Coast Highway straight into Port Maria. It will also see water going for the very first time into the communities of Kidland and Lookout. This is a transformational project. This government and this MP will be delivering water to the people. But it's not only there, Mr. Speaker. The then minister, the Honorable Senator Matthew Samuda, approved the project of laying a six-inch pipeline from the White River Treatment Plant through Labyrinth straight into the town of Gale, so that the people of Hyatt, Richard Spen, Gale, Coombstown, Saltrum, and all adjoining committees, communities will no longer have any shortage of water for many, many years to come. A solar-powered 15-horsepower pump is being installed in Mile Gully as we speak. And I want to thank the Stanford family from Mile Gully for making the lands available. A solar pump is also slated for Brockway. The rural water companies to establish a new water system at fall in spring in Springfield so that the people of Springfield and Windsor Castle can be removed from the geysel system and thereafter Waterford and Heartlands will see improved water supplies. These communities, Mr. Speaker, have suffered long enough and a solution is at hand. And yes, Mr. Speaker, this is what we refer to as shared prosperity. Mr. Speaker, 350,000 gallon tank will be bought and placed in Geisel. 
and along with the 100,000 gallon tank that is currently in Morris Hill, we will have the ability to store the water that will be coming up as a result of an agreement with the National Irrigation Commission, NIC, and the NWC. Minister Green has already given permission for 1 million gallons of water per day to be sent from the Rio Magna up to the Geisel treatment plant. Yes. And thereafter, sections of Northeast St. Catherine, Southeast St. Anne, and the communities of Decoy, Maiden Hall, Top Road, Jeffrey Town, Waterford, Kubikana, Old Road, Cox Peace, and Heartlands will see a massive improvement in their water supplies. Yes. The Petersfield system will be upgraded as new pipes will be laid and a new solar pump is slated for the Comma Spring. The Champagne Spring in Jackson is slated for another solar pump and the Fellowship Hall and Ramble Springs will be upgraded. A new pipeline is planned from Sand Hill to Port Maria to replace the old encrusted one that is there. So Sand Hill, Crescent, Geddestown, Oxford, Carapies Road, Baileysville and Freehill we'll see better and more consistent water supplies. Mr. Speaker, this is what we call shared prosperity. The industry pen project by the National Housing Trust will see the Emancipation Lands project finally being completed. Mr. Speaker, when this, this project start, was started, certain infrastructural improvements were promised to the people when they were investing, and it never happened. But Dr. Andrew Holness, Prime Minister, committed to the people of Industry Pen, and the NHT will be spending the funds for a new sewage system, improved water supplies, roads, electricity, and land titles. A development by others with over 900 homes were never completed, but this government will be completing it for the benefit of the people. This project will not only benefit industry, benefit industry Penn, but the wider Three Hills community, Petersfield, Roscommon, Charlestown. Mr. Speaker, the most honorable Prime Minister is continuing to share the prosperity because he has instructed the National Land Agency to transfer 31 acres of land being held by the Airports Authority of Jamaica into the name of the Factories Corporation of Jamaica for the establishment of a special economic zone and urban center for St. Mary. This is situated south of the Ian Fleming International Airport. This project, which has seen lands being cleared so that the architect can finalize the designs and the necessary geotechnical tests can be fast-tracked, the plan draws on the unique opportunities that having an international airport next door gives. So a business processing facility to do data entry for legal, medical, and technological back office works, a commercial center to house restaurants, banks, stores, government offices, etc., warehouses, factories, aircraft hangars, factory outlets, and a new terminal building, as well as a medical facility will be accommodated. So far, Mr. Speaker, it is estimated that this area will be employing some 2,500 Jamaicans. Yes, Mr. Speaker, 2,500 jobs. And if it is left to me alone, Mr. Speaker, the vast majority of them will come from St. Mary. And that is why we have a partnership with Heart Trust to train and certify our people into data entry, construction skills, office management, IT and other hospitality skills. We have started with over 200 trainees in Gale and we'll be opening another center in Mount Angus soon, then Windsor Castle, Boscobel, Galena, and Vallebush. Hart is currently doing a series of on-the-job certifications in the area so that those who will be employed in the construction will be certified by Hart. So far, they have certified over 100 persons in various construction skills. Mr. Speaker, this project is good for everybody. More places will be available for rent. More people will be traveling, so more income for the bus and taxi operators. More people will be working, so the bars, nightclubs, barbers, hairdressers, cook shops, restaurants, vendors will benefit. 
more economic activities mean the whole region will be uplifted. The hardware store will sell more. More people with new incomes will build houses or will add to what they have. Property values will increase. Mr. Speaker, some of our schools were damaged by Hurricane Berry. And after a quick appeal to our hardworking Minister of Education, she responded and she responded in a meaningful way. So that the Karen Hall High School, the Karen Hall Primary School, the Karen Hall Infant School, Freehill Primary School, Taki High Campus 1 and 2, Ramble Retreat, Derry Primary School could be opened in time for the new school year. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the Goshen Primary School got a new canteen, fencing and a facelift, and the students love it. Yeah. But Mr. Speaker, Minister Williams never stopped there. She has also written to tell me that my pleas over the years have been heard and that the Arokobeta High School will be getting eight new classrooms, an auditorium, staff room, offices, chemistry, biology and agricultural labs, a multi-purpose court, a sewage system, fencing and a solar system. Some $49 million is currently being spent on designs and tests and pre-approvals. Mr. Speaker, she never stopped there. She went on to say that at the Arokobesa Primary School, they will get a new block of 20 new classrooms, a staff room, canteen, offices, a library, computer lab, fencing, disability ramps, and a solar system. Almost a brand new school at the Arokobesa Primary School. The 20 old NAC buildings that Brother Paul well, is well aware of, will be knocked down. And Mr. Speaker, some, 20, some $60 million is being spent on design, surveys, tests, and approval. But we're not finished. Because the Iona High School will be seeing a massive expansion. Four new classrooms, an auditorium, staff rooms, four new labs, sewage system, disability ramps, fencing, and a solar system. Because they're spending some $45 million on pre-investment work. But if you think we've stopped there, we don't stop there. Minister, because the Taki High School will be expanded when we complete the purchase of additional lands next door to move the school from two campuses to one campus. Build more classrooms, a staff room, labs and offices. And the Sports Development Foundation has committed to building a gym and improving the playing field at Taki. But well, Mr. Speaker, the best gift in my political career for education has been given to me by Minister Williams. <laughs> and however, this gift is the construction of a new school to replace one that was destroyed by fire many years ago and was converted to a container school. And today, some $30 million is being spent on pre-investment activities to build a new primary school for Jeffrey Town in St. Mary. It has been a long wait for the people of Jeffrey Town, and we want to thank Minister Williams. The funding for all these school projects have gone through the public investment system and will be included in the next budget for work to start in 2025. Test pre-investment activities and consultations are currently ongoing. We want to thank you, Minister Favall Williams, for sharing the prosperity. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, St. Mary is a tourism parish as well as an agricultural parish, but Western St. Mary is a tourism constituency. And I am pleased to inform you that Minister Bartlett has heard our cry and the tourism enhancement fund will be building two new public beaches, one in Rio Nuevo and one in Arokobesa. With world-class facilities to include changing rooms, lifeguard stations, picnic areas, shops, and a performing stage. All the designs are done. The consultations are done. The permits are on track for approval. And we want to start building out these in the next financial year. Access by our people to quality beaches is important. Mr. Speaker, we have some of the worst roads in Jamaica, if not the worst set of roads. 
and we are anxiously awaiting the start, the start of the REACH and SPARK program. The people of Western St. Mary cannot wait for these programs to start. Other people have a little bad road here and a little bad road there. We have so so bad road. <laughs> no, Western. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the member's time having been expired, I beg to move that it be extended by 10 minutes to allow him to complete his presentation. May it please you, Mr. Speaker. The request is on the floor for the extension of the time. Those in favor? Those against the eyes of it? Member, you may continue. Mike. Thank you, my dear colleague. Mr. Speaker, I ask, however, one particular community for continued patience, Mango Valley. And I apologize to them for the long drawn out procurement process. But we are making sure no questions are asked. And Minister Nesta Morgan has publicly stated that some work that some work will start soon on the Mango Valley Fellowship Hall Road, and we humbly ask for the community's continued patience. The Mango Valley Road is not being funded under SPARC. It is a separate program. It has its separate funding, but we have to just proceed with the procurement process. Mr. Speaker, the provision of houses and housing solutions will be done with a new 300 solution, solution housing scheme in Galena. Upgrading of the Othersfield views, extending water pipes and gully road up into Boscobel views, and completing the provision of water for the Eden Park housing scheme in Jacks River that was built years ago without any pipe in the scheme. And this government is going to put in the pipes. The upgrading of the Lighthouse Road housing project and the issuing of titles, upgrading the hills of Spicy Grove, by putting in proper water supplies, a retaining wall, and a roadway. And we are currently in negotiations with the family to purchase the garden and lands in Arakobesa so the people who live there can get the title and security of tenure. Yes. We are currently looking at lands in Decoy, Salisbury, Jacks River, and Labyrinth for establishing new housing schemes. And these plans are far advanced. Housing and titles for our people is a priority of the Andrew Holness administration, and we intend to fulfill those. Yep. With regards to health care, we have seen the National Health Fund and Dr. Christopher Tufton responding to us in St. Mary with improvements at the Carin Hall, Mason Hall, Gale, Wood Park, and Arakobesa clinics. The Oxford Clinic in Freehill, like the Retreat Clinic, is being expanded and upgraded. Improvement work is set for Jeffrey Town, Bonnygate, and the Fellowship Hall Clinic. And there is a special program for upgrading the Wood Park Clinic, which is the old Claude Stewart Maternity Center. The Hunstone Clinic will be re relocated to a new clinic, which is to be built in Top, top Pen on lands being donated by the Allen family. The legal transfers are being worked out. I wish to thank Minister Green and Minister Charles for the very robust response in sharing the prosperity after the passage of Hurricane Berry. Let me thank all the shelter managers, neighbors, and friends, the JPS, the NWC, the Municipal Cooperation, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, and all other agencies and teams for their service. <laughs> Minister Green, the Karen Hall and Arakobesa High Schools have been consistently top performers in CXC agriculture. And I want to invite you, Minister Green, to visit these schools and carry a little gift. Because we hear that you have a hydroponics program going, and a rock we will do well with that, and Carnal will do well with a little tractor. I want to thank Minister Mackenzie for the provision of that indigent house for Mr. Reddy in Gale. And Auntie Babsy, thank you for the support in the mini stadium in a rock and the gym for Taki. But you know, we're still looking for the $5 million to complete the stadium. I want to thank Dr. Chang for getting the Arakobesa Police Barracks project back on track. And thanks for the promised vehicle dock. And we are looking forward to the promised expansion of Jamaica Eye Program into St. Mary. 
Mr. Speaker, I wish to commend Minister Vaz and the most honorable Prime Minister for being bold enough to act on a call I have been making from 2014 and repeated it in the last debate for Jamaica to examine nuclear energy as an alternative source for our needs. The signing of the MOU recently clearly says this government listens, this government cares, and then this government acts. I want to thank you, Minister Vaz. And while we are at it, Minister Vaz, may I recommend that a new industrial port be for the establishment of a new industrial port between Arokobesa and Galena be examined. I also wish to thank Minister Clark for the reverse tax credit program. And this payback to our taxpayers earning less than $3 million is to be commended. Yeah. After a big readjustment in salaries for public sector workers, offering permanent positions to thousands of contract workers, no new net taxes for the, over eight years, we have managed the economy so well that we can give back some of the taxes to our people. This is shared prosperity. But, Mr. Speaker, I would wish for the government to go further. I would like to propose a program known as the SHARE program, a program to bring more people and communities together and sharing the fruits of their sacrifices over the years, a program to give the poor and vulnerable a start, to give them hope, and to allow them to carve a way forward by their own sweat and efforts. Sports, housing and health, agriculture, rural development and employment, SHARE. I am proposing a $15 billion program to be shared evenly across constituencies for the upliftment of the poor and the vulnerable, creating opportunities for people, and finally bringing light and water to every nook and cranny of Jamaica. We have always asked the poor to sacrifice, to band their belly, to hold strain, to cut back. Well, let us start investing in the poor now. Let us give them a chance, an opportunity to share the prosperity they have waited long enough. Let me quickly point out that by spreading this money over the year and across Jamaica, the effect on inflation of this investment will be negligibly, negligible, but the effect on revenues will be immense. In sports, I'm asking for $2 million per constituency to be spent on community playing fields, but at least one high school should be included, and this can be funded by the Chase Fund and Sports Development Foundation. Under health, $3 million to be allocated to each constituency to help people with prescription drugs, glasses, medical items and equipment to be funded by the National Health Fund. And a housing grant of $5 million per constituency to be funded by the uncollected NHT returns and the housing fund. For agriculture, some $4 million to be granted for agricultural startup enterprises or expansion of existing ones that we'll see at least one new person being employed or new technology being transferred with emphasis on youth and women. Under the rural development, $2 billion to be shared equally for rural water and rural light, and to have at least one solar-powered water system to be done per rural constituency, and to provide electricity to rural communities once and for all, and to use solar or wind technologies for hard-to-reach communities. Under employment, each MP should be asked to recommend 200 participants in a one-year program of employment and training and paying them $20,000 per week. And we need to invite all government agencies and ministries to come forward to see how many trainees they can take and how much they can contribute. Persons to be recommended should be from the age 18 to 55 years old and to give older persons a chance to retool or to get a job and to create opportunities and experience for the young. We have all shared the hardships and the sacrifices. Now let us share the prosperity. The Bauxite Levy Fund, how can we fund this? The Bauxite Levy Fund is owed over US $30 million. Half of that should be committed to this program and the other half into a well fund. Government entities have billions of dollars in fixed deposits. It's poor people's money being held in trust. We don't have to use it all, but some can be invested in the poor. Mr. Speaker, I would like to use this opportunity once again to call for Chief Taki to be made into a national hero. It was this mighty chief who stood up and not only spoke out against the ills of slavery, but acted. He led his people and made a stance for a country to be led by them, for them and their children. Black X is here with me. 
He has championed this call with his many works. And I would wish to see this honor bestowed on Chief Taki before Black X depart, departs this land. I know he's not 100% well, and I want to wish you all the best and get well soon, Black X. Let us hope that the commission will be established soon and this honor bestowed upon Chief Taki before the next National Heroes Day. In the same vein, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs must redouble its efforts to have placed before President Biden a request for a presidential pardon for His Excellency Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Let us do what we must to get this document before President Biden before the end of January. I am calling on the new finance minister, whoever that is, to make completing the final fixed FENSAC report a priority. We as a party campaigned on it, we placed it in our manifesto, and as a team and as a party and a government, we must fulfill that commitment. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the College of Agriculture, Science and Education a very unique institution that is in Portland. I happen to be a past student and was one of the pioneer students. That act needs to be amended so that a permanent space can be made for an alumni representative on the Board of Governors. It is the only tertiary institution that does not have that provision. And Mr. Speaker, I am saddened by the recent multi and mass killings in our country. The gains made in the fight against crime must be protected, and it can be protected if we reintroduce hanging. We must have no pity on these worthless criminals. We must have pity on the victims and their families. Let us hang them, and some people say hang them. But whether you hang them or you hang them, as long as they are dead, 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 and them teeth killed, And varnish truth. Hanging must be reintroduced without delay. It is the only real deterrent to murder in Jamaica. And the Firearms Act must be amended to make it easier for law abiding Jamaicans to get a gun license. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, no one can deny that this government has performed and has performed admirably. Yep. We have brought down the debt to GDP from over 440% to less than 70%. We have cut all major categories of crime. We have record international reserves, annual increase in tourist arrivals, expansion of businesses, the largest ever increase for public servants, thus increasing the middle class, record agricultural output, increased access to water and student loans, hard training up to an associate degree is free. We are building four new hospitals, the lowest unemployment rate in our history, issuing more land titles, making it easier to invest and introduce the social pension program for the elderly. No one can deny that the people have sacrificed, that they have suffered, and this government hears the cry of the people, and that is why we have increased the path payment, giving back taxes, and we are now ready to share our common prosperity with the poor and vulnerable. Here, here. Mr. Speaker, we in Western St. Mary believe that prosperity is not only for some, it is for all, and that is why it must be shared. This government, this caring government, this Andrew Holness-led government yeah. works night and day in the interest of our fellow citizens so that Jamaica may increase in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity. Mr. Speaker, if it's so, please do. Thank you.